even when I was working and making records and and uh, you know going on tour of Europe, neighbors would say, "So what do you do?" And I say, "Well, I'm a musician." They go, oh, "You can't make any money at that." And I, yeah. <laughs> you know, they'd say things like that. That's like a, that's kind of a universal though. But. Like who who would ever talk to people of like course. that? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, then other musicians would say, "So what do you what do you play?" And I tell them, they go like, "Nobody likes that," or like, "You'll never get anywhere doing that." And you know, I'm not saying any of them are wrong, but it's all been kind of you know brutal to deal with. Uh, you know, sure. Well, you have to have your own, you have to have you have to have constant conviction in what it is that you're doing, which isn't easy when th- th- when there's no external support for it in some respects. Or yeah, you have to build up the support. The yeah, you have to do the whole thing yourself. It, yeah, it's a. I think maybe this is what a lot of young people don't get um, as a kind of opportunity. Although I know I tell them a lot, you improvise the whole thing. You improvise the whole thing. Yeah. It's not just about improvising the music on the stage. Sure. You improvise the direction you take. You improvise the configuration of a group of people you work with. You improvise where you get to perform. Sometimes things that are already established are, are there for you. Mm-hmm. But the fact is, that's how this whole thing happened for the forever. And if you trace it back to its origins, to African-American people, they had to improvise everything. 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 I mean... How to get food, how to survive, what a family configuration was. Sure. You know, what their sense of history was, how to, a transportation system, a wedding ritual, a funeral. Ri- they improvised everything. And so we're following that. And obviously, there's a thing in that that is incredibly, profoundly humane to me. Yeah. And so that's what I like about it. Sure. And as a kind of feral kid, who was already at the rock bottom uh, at 14 years old, uh, I can tell you that having heroes and teachers who were born into a worse situation, they could be the greatest people on the planet, but they had to overcome this incredible limit put on them due to racism. Sure. That they did this and had such a, a high-minded... Uh, elevated sense about its purpose and its value to people that those were my heroes is really what totally drove me into this like i i would never think well you know yeah but you know they have millions of dollars and they can do whatever they want <laughs> i was like right yeah, there yeah. are people who are like gonna do this thing because it means something to them sure. and it means something to their survival as as a person and i mean over the years i've learned you know so many of my heroes, you know, they had no money or they struggled way harder than I ever did and they worked other jobs and they, you know, never got a gig and, you know, they died very young. So uh, I keep that kind of thing in perspective every day, all the time, that, that like I'm trying to be involved in a thing that I think is really like um, high human endeavor with a tremendous amount of dignity attached sure. to it. Yeah. yeah. 